What? Hello. I hope your day is well. Oh, I kind of thought it said Class Child reopened after the Monomy segment. So I was about to say, no Monomy segment? Hooray! Oh, there is one anyways, though. I'm trying to force myself to be more energetic, or else my mental state won't be able to keep up. Sucks to be you. Because you're into all the despair, right? Don't try to hide it. You're a villain. I might as well have a laid-back, so what attitude and go ahead with high energy. Screw you, you know. We're all out here dying and shit. And you're just like, oh, oh, I should totally have a laid-back attitude. Even if you are a good guy, you're a total bitch about it. But no, you're definitely not. Probably. Yeehaw! Shut up. At least say yippee ki -yay. But be careful that your batteries don't run out for various reasons. Joke's on you. This is a PSTV. There are no batteries. And just like I say each time, don't forget to say it frequently. <laughs> Jeez. Never get tired of Monokuma speeches. But I do get tired of the Monomi speeches. What are you going to do? I... I never... expected the funhouse itself to be the ultimate weapon. Oh well. Let's just press on ahead. <laughs> oh, Chiaki. Nice. Usually not so comical like that. Nice. Is it really alright to accept a situation so easily? It makes sense when you think about it. Still don't know who the killer is, but it makes sense. I mean, that's not what's important. The thing that's really important is... How they used it. The killer who used the building structure. Like who's Mekumaru's murderer? And how they used it. But okay, yeah, that too. That's important. But is it really okay to believe the building is the weapon? Nagito said it, you know. And he's a smart guy, even though he's crazy. And usually he's helpful, but now he's being a bit pessimistic, which is annoying. But, he's right. We just have to talk about how it was used first. There's no way I'd lie at such an important moment. I don't want to die either. Yeah, that is new. That is a new thing. And before, you've always been like, I don't care if I die. Because you wanted to be a stepladder, but now it's like you don't even care much about the Hope students. And maybe that's why you don't want to be a stepladder, because they're not worthy of you being a stepladder anymore? What did you learn? What happened to the bastard who kept saying how much they didn't mind dying? Exactly! He's right. There was a time when I thought I could become a stepping stone for your hopes, but... Now you realize our hopes suck balls? I will sincerely retract that remark. What is up with you, Nagito? I really want to know. I'm really interested in your character. I love it. But you being so pessimistic is kind of annoying. Retract? I'm disappointed too, you know. If this was a murder for the sake of hope, I'd happily sacrifice myself. But it was for the sake of the despair? I don't get it. <laughs> you say such falsehoods per usual. There is no such thing as murder for the sake of hope. Murder is simply murder. Gundam's got the right of it. Although, why do you think it's for despair this time? Forcibly sacrificing others for one's own desires. Even one as diabolical as I would avoid such actions. Yeah, and we know how diabolical he is, so it's gotta be bad. I see. <laughs> it's fine. Let's just leave him alone and find out who killed Coach Nekomaru as fast as we can. You mean Robo Coach Mekamaru. But yes, let's do that. Just so you know, it's not like I'm getting hungry or anything, you know. <sighs> Ungrateful bitch. Really hope you're the killer, because I really don't like you, but alright. Uh, Akane, you're drooling waterfalls? Nagito, as usual, I can't tell what he's thinking. I have no idea if he's serious or not. Isn't that the best part about him? <laughs> anyway, if the killer used the building structure... Why don't we think about how they used it? That's a good idea, though I'm pretty sure I know how. How they killed Nekomaru. Mekamaru. It might be better if we clarify the cause of death first, don't you think? Exactly. Nekomaru's cause of death, huh? He was horribly damaged as if he was being beaten senseless with a blunt object. Yeah, but what's that about? Because he wasn't beaten with anything. At least, not, um... Not the, not, not the way you would think. Actually, wait, if his body was tied with the wire, that wouldn't make sense. I was thinking the wire was tied one end of the pillar, because that's the, what they were saying. 
and the other end was tied to the doorknob or something, but I guess it would make sense if... Was it tied to him in the doorknob? Or were there two wires or... I don't know. Or maybe he tied it around Mechamar after the fact. Anyways, if he was beaten with a blunt object, it wouldn't be a kill that utilized the building structure. So what was Mechamar's cause of death that also utilized the building structure? Dead battery, crushed by the elevator, uh, falling. Mechamar's actual cause, well, kind of, because of the what now, whatever. He crushed by the elevator, that sounds quite painful. So where and how was he crushed? Um... Crap! Did I die? Hooray! We will never give up, Count! Look at how hungry Akane is. She's like, yes, food time! Even though, unless she's the killer, she won't get any food. This is my... Yes. We will never give up! I hate that they give you a time limit. Like, what, if you decide to go AFK and take a piss and you come back and you're too slow? Are you fucked? You have to restart the trial? Uh, oh, do I have to go this far back? Are you kidding? What happened? There is force of It's just anyway. How they? It might be. All right. Cause of death. Um. Had to be blunt object. It couldn't have been falling. Or wait, could it have been? Falling? I see. Oh. That's it. I think he might have died from falling. Oh, I get it. Wait, but then why aren't there any rock fragments on top of him? Okay, so if his sleep mode was turned on, then he could have had one end tied to him, one end tied to the pillar. Then some. This would have been on the grape. No, the strawberry outside of things. And then they went to grape. Grape hall, right? And then they uh, activated the elevator while he was in sleep mode. And then Mechamaru would have went dangling, you know, kinda. A and then, but then the... Yeah, he was dangling from the pillar, but... So yeah, the floor went down, but Mechamaru didn't go with him. He was just dangling from the pillar until eventually the pillar fell as well, I guess? And then, yeah, the pillar fell first, and he followed the pillar. So yeah, he smashed the ground. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. I'm just visualizing in my head. It was, seemed a bit weird at first, but I guess it makes sense. Died from falling? If the Funhouse's secret is that it's a structure where both towers and houses are vertically connected, then the killer made use of its height and caused Negamaro to die from falling. Yeah, I think I get it. Are you saying they pushed him off? Where'd they push him off from? Not quite pushed off. It's all thanks to the wire. That, I don't know yet. It's the wire, silly boy. <laughs> don't just make things up when you don't know the method. He's right, but it doesn't have to do with pushing. Where in that building would you even be able to push someone off in the first place? The pillar? Wait, no. Wait, no? What? But the pillars move with the floor, don't they? Or wait, do they? Maybe they don't. Do they move with the floor? If the pillars move with the floor, then it doesn't make sense. But the pillars are on the floor. Or are they not? What? I'm confused. No, we would have noticed if there was two pillars in one place, but then only one pillar in the other. Which means it's the same two pillars, so they move with the floor. But then how could he have been... He must have been tied to the chain, right? Or they were both tied to the chain? Because him being tied to the pillar doesn't make any sense. Unless he fell on top of the... Oh, okay. He was tied to the chain, and then the floor moved down, and then the rope was cut somehow... And then he fell on top of the pillar, and the pillar knocked over, and then he fell down. I guess that would make sense, but how did they cut the wire? Who would have the skills? Gundam. You have hamsters. 
Hamsters could have been able to get to that wire without anyone, without you having to get to it. Hamsters could have stayed behind and cut the wire so that he fell to his death. This whole time I've been thinking Soda Cans is likely because he knows mech stuff. Akane because it, it uh, would be a plot twist and I don't like her. And Sonya because she's been impeding everyone else's progress it seemed like. But I'm thinking you did it. Calling it right here. Gundam's the killer. It might be possible in the tower. You could push him off the fourth floor when the elevator is on the first floor. How'd you do that without, you know, going up to the fourth floor again? Unless you have hamsters or something to activate the wire that it cut. Did you forget how the elevator functions? When it's on the first floor, the door on the fourth floor won't open. <laughs> Saying he died from falling is truly incorrect. You should burn in the flames of hell. What's motive? Is it just starvation? Or is there something more? I guess if you really love your hamsters, if you love your pets so much, mm, maybe. But you said there was food for the hamsters. Maybe he was running out? Maybe. Hmm. But my gut is going crazy right now. Nekomaru died from falling. Where'd the killer shove Nekomaru from? If I'm gonna reach the truth behind this incident, I need to solve that mystery next. Alright. Good night button, Akane's account, Fika's account, contact elevator, clock's alarm. Um. Um. When the elevator is on the first. What does the clock's alarm have to do with it? Uh, actually, yeah, where's the clock's alarm gonna play into this? I'm not sure. And why does the time of death have to be altered? I'm trying to think now. Went off at 5.30. Um, maybe it was to give Gundam an alibi? Maybe. Anyways, broken doorknob, strange feeling, good night button, Akane's account, Fuhiko's account. Okay, let's just see where, where this is going. Is the wire there? You can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Huh. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Mekamaru inside the elevator... They moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Yeah. Hold on. Did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside. Wait. No. No. I know what it is. I know what it is. The other door won't open. Good night, button. That's it. Which means the elevator wouldn't have moved either. Got it. That must be the threshold of that elevator. I got it. Need to make it clear? Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I know what to when do. the elevator is on the first floor, you can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Nikamaru inside the elevator, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside. There we go. No, that's wrong. That sensor should only work if something is moving. Would the hamsters be picked up by the sensors? That's could they have like stayed behind? I'm not actually that's a good point. That could throw a hole in my theory. Or if they if they were picked up by the sensor. Could they scurry up the wall from the bottom? I don't know if the, uh, if hamsters are capable of that. And what, I don't think the wall had the right material. Now I'm not so sure it's Gundam. Maybe. If Nekomaru wasn't moving inside, the elevator sensor wouldn't have detected anything. Oh! Oh, well... Yeah, a hamster. There, he has one hamster that sleeps all the time. Of course, it must be that hamster. He had it awake. He used his special command. Maybe. Could it be his sleep mode? 
When Nekomaru's goodnight button is pressed, all of his functions shut down, and he enters sleep mode. If he's in sleep mode, the elevator sensor wouldn't have noticed him. Oh, and who the hell would be able to sneak up on uh, Nekomaru uh, and turn on his sleep mode? He probably, pro I doubt, I don't know if anyone would be able to, unless it's something that's hard to spot, like a hamster. Even then, it'd probably be kind of difficult, but I'd say it has the best chance. I see. So that's how... However, even if they moved the elevator in that manner, Nekomaru would have just moved along with it. Um, I haven't been paying full attention. What have they been saying? Oh, they were saying, um... Shit, what were they saying? I've actually kind of... I've been lost in my own thought about this whole is gun and the murderer thing. Right, Nekomaru would have had to be turned off, and now they're saying, yeah, the elevator would have, he would have moved it, unless he was tied to something. There would have been no drop for him to fall and die from, yes. Unless the wire was used. That's what I was about to explain, before Kazuichi interrupted me. Yeah, soda cans! Silence, pest! Haha, <laughs> exactly! Now you're calling me a pest? <laughs> nice. A way to create the drop inside the elevator while Nekomaru is still in it. Shaka seems to have an idea, but what way could there be? Wire. It's the wire. The wire's gotta be here now. It's the wire. Wire! First thing. It's the wire. Definitely. If you arrange it a certain way... You can cause the drop within the elevator. Exactly, but I don't want to... So you're telling us all... I want to agree, not disagree. ...to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. No. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? No. The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. How about we all shut up and listen to what Chiaki has to say? Exactly. Silence, pest! Ah! Don't be so cold. What if I start to enjoy it? <laughs> what? That's it? Nothing works. Maybe the pillar? Maybe. The doorknob? If you arrange it a certain way. You can cause the drop within the elevator. I want to agree with that, not disagree. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? Nope. No, wait, maybe it's the doorknob? Maybe I have to take Chiaki's statement. If you arrange it a certain way... You can cause the drop within the elevator. Maybe. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is the hammer is suspicious. No. Nope. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? Tried that already. What about the oil on the floor? No. Nope. The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. Maybe. Ah, go away. No. Ah, there we go. I agree with that. Didn't the doorknob have scrape marks on it? But that doesn't make sense. Wait. No, I'm getting them confused. God damn it, I'm getting them confused. Oh, wow. I got them confused. Okay. Here's what I was thinking. The doorknob couldn't have been it because it was on the wrong floor, right? It was on the bottom floor, the grape floor. But no, it wasn't. The one on the grape floor was the one with the chain, but it had a strawberry door, so I got confused again. The one with the grape door had the missing doorknob, which was on strawberry floor, so it makes sense. Okay, that's correct. That might have been where it got scraped by the wire. Yeah. Is that the same wire that was tied around Nekomaru? Actually, now this makes things even weirder. So, how did the doorknob break off? It's not its not like they could have tested the breaking limit. Well, I mean, maybe they could have assumed, but... 
What if the wire broke first or something? Or how would they have made sure the doorknob came off? Okay. Uh, now I'm not so sure it's gotten them. I don't know. The tip of that wire was tied into a loop. If the elevator moved while that loop part hung from the doorknob. If, if they did something like that, he would have been suspended in midair. Exactly, but how would... Unless, okay, unless Gundam was planning on sending his hamsters to cut the rope, but the doorknob broke off before he could do that. If that's the case, then it still makes sense. Okay, so Gundam still looks suspicious. That's right. He was suspended in midair. Huh? Yeah. The killer tied up Mechamara with the wire while he was in sleep mode. Yup. Tied the tip of the wire into a knot and hung it on the doorknob to the fourth floor. Makes sense so far. With that, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor of Grape Tower. And then magic happened. The flying man. Robot. And suspended Mechamaru in midair. And if he fell head first, that would make sense. That's right! He was so well hung! <laughs> Kinda like... Mona me. You better not finish that sentence! <laughs> The killer took advantage of the elevator's unique feature. Only the floor moves. Yep. Still though, how would they have the, gotten the breaking point? By doing that, they created a drop so Nekomaru could fall to his death. Too easy. Whoa! So what if they created a drop? There's no way you can make him fall and die with just that. I think I know what he's going to say. Last time he objected to me, it was a complete joke and he had a weak spot in the first statement. I wonder if that'll happen again. Um, I think that was the case. Or was it Gundam? Was it Gundam or was it Sodacan? I don't remember. It was probably Sodacan because he's a joke, but maybe not. Um, yeah, so I think I know where we're going with this. It's just how did it break off? That's a good point. How would he have known? Why? Nekomaru is suspended in midair like that, then how do you get him to fall? Exactly. Good point. Because if he's suspended in midair, he won't die if he doesn't actually fall. What is this going to be? Wire? Tripped over pillar? Broken doorknob? New looking hammer? Radio even clock? If they suspended ne radio clock? I don't even remember the radio clock. What is that? Where is that? Oh, right. I don't think this has anything to do with it. Kamaru from a wire. How would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push him off. There's no way they could do that. It doesn't mean someone had to push him off. It's possible that he fell on his own. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Uh, wait, no, I was on the right thing before. The tripped over pillar. Yeah. Oh, wait, that would be agreeing. Never mind. Ah! Crap! <laughs> what? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? If he was sleeping, there's no way he could... <laughs> Now's the time if you want But in that case. You still won't be able to explain moving the elevator with Nekomaru in... It's just impossible. End of story. Thanks to Soda Cans, I think I figured out how the killer dropped Mo Nekomaru. Um... I like this song a lot. I have to listen to it. It's just... I really do like it. I just You never get a good chance to listen to it. Anyways. Uh, I'm gonna have to add this to, like, my favorites on YouTube or something. Uh, okay. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode. Wait, no! Stop it! Um... Clock's alarm timer! Radio clock! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Shit! Shit! Crap! Okay, maybe it was clock's what? alarm timer. Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? There we go. Allow me to cut through those words. Whatever. What do you think would happen if Nekomaru woke up while he was suspended upside down in midair? 
Oh. Okay. That makes sense. I suppose. But would he still die instantly? What are you saying? Like, how would he even wake up? Because of his wake up feature. He has an alarm inside his body. As long as it was armed, it would have deactivated his sleep mode. Which means the killer set the alarm before they suspended Nekamaru. Still though, would that necessarily kill them? Although this is making it look like Gundam didn't do it. If that's if Gunda if that if it wasn't because the wire broke. Yeah, in fact, if it was the doorknob falling off, then never mind. Gundam no longer looks the most suspicious. I retract it. I hope it's Akane still. If you woke up from an alarm and realized you were hanging upside down and had no clue why. If something like that happened to you, you would start panicking a lot, right? Duh. Instinctively, your body would start moving. Mekamaru probably did exactly that. And then it broke? And then, in order to make him fall from the force he was generating, the wire was hung on the tip of the doorknob so it would easily slip off. But it actually broke the doorknob altogether. In actuality, the scrape marks caused by the wire were near the tip of the doorknob, right? Makes sense. But Neko Maru didn't fall because the wire came off, right? Yeah, it fell because the doorknob came off. He fell because the entire doorknob came off. Yeah, because Mekomaru is pretty damn heavy. When Nekomaru awoke, he must have struggled much more than expected, which caused the doorknob to break off. Which is bad for the killer's plans, because it kind of helped us figure out that the doors had to be different. Was that unexpected for the killer too? Well, that's probably it. If they knew it'd leave behind evidence like that, they would have at least tried to do something to cover it up. Possibly. Maybe not, though. Killer didn't expect the door to come off. The reason that even happened was because... In that case, I just used my full power! Oh! With the fierce war, Nekomar put all his power into grabbing the doorknob with both hands. But... Clatter, 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 clatter. Not yet. Here it comes. The incredible strength of one million horsepower! Oh yeah, that's right. He did try to break the doorknob off. And I stopped him last minute. So, the force of that, along with Nekomar's body later on, is what broke the doorknob. Okay. Goo! Isn't it crack creaking? If you break off the doorknob, we'll be stuck in here! I forgot about that. If that's really what it was, then that's the clue Nekomar left us for us to find. But how does that help us find out who the killer is? That's the question. I see. So that's how Nekomaru fell to his death. Exactly. So silence, fool. Or what was what was she calling you? Pest. Pest. Do you finally understand now? Yeah. Yeah. It appears it's just as Miss Sonia said. You're a pest. I'm just a pest. No, I'm not just a pest. I'm a total fucking pig. <laughs> Why are you being so down on yourself now? You're like Nagito. Isn't that right, Miss Sonia? If I'm a fucking pig, you can say so. Nah, she probably doesn't like the swear words. But you're kind of like becoming like the new Yamada. Even though Sonia isn't like Celeste at all, really. <laughs> no, I believe you gave your all. Oh, turnabout. Hey. Why aren't you teasing me anymore? <laughs> you can never have your way, can you, Soda Cans? This guy. He gets off on this. <laughs> uh. So thanks to that alarm, Nekomaru ended up falling while he was still hanging upside down. Indeed. That doesn't mean he just crashed straight into the floor. Of course, you know that too, right? Slam dunk into the pillar. Doesn't mean Nekomar crashed straight into the floor. The moment Nekomar finds the only thing I can think of. Spoiler. I see. When Nekomaro fell to the floor, he ended up colliding with the pillar. Isn't that it? Yep. Finally, the pillar! <laughs> so that's how the pillar shattered, and why oil was spilled all over the place. Makes sense. See, I told you the pillar was the weapon. My gut was totally right. Well, the pillar was a bonus. 
It's not even clear if the killer intended that, or if it was just a coincidence. At this point, it is quite difficult to find a clue that will lead to the killer. Good point. What would that clue be? It might have to do with the time being off, because the time was off for some reason. I just don't know what it means. Then what about the alarm? I'm positive the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m., and if we map it out from there... That means he... Yeah, that's weird. Hold on, baby gangsta. Yeah, baby gangsta. S stop calling me baby gangsta. <laughs> What'd you just say? Did you say the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m.? Because it was. You, you didn't check it yourself? Nekomaru's alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. Nah, that's impossible. The clocks were tampered with, dumb bitch. Because even though I slept in a little, I still got to the tower at 7 in the morning. N now that you mention it, so did I. We all did, but we didn't actually. The clocks were off. There was no way I could be late for Monokuma Tai Chi, so I left for Grape Tower before 7 a.m. Unless the clocks were tampered with. By someone who knew how to tamper with clocks like a mechanic? Maybe? I don't know. And if we found Nekomaru's body there, it would have been before the 7.30 a.m. alarm went off. It appears yet another contradiction has been birthed. How were you able to discover Nekomaru died at 7.30 a.m. when you went to the tower at 7? Okay, uh, a couple things. A... Do you know it was AM and not PM? Um, because it might have been PM. Although, if it was AM, then the clocks were tampered with. Th that's what I want to know! Let me really ch quickly check that, actually. Truth bullets. So, if we go to the clock... Where's, uh... Yeah, <laughs> Where's the... This? Where does it say... Clock's alarm just stopped at around 7.30, and the alarm was set to... Oh, so do we know this was AM or PM? If we don't know, then it could be 7.30 PM, which means the night before. But that time was supposed to be at around 5 AM, right? Unless... Either way, the clocks were tampered with. Whatever. Another mystery I don't understand. Seriously, it's just one after another. I can't choke up at a time like this. There's a little more and I'll be able to reach the truth. There should definitely be a clue to breaking through this contradiction. Make your argument! Uh, wall clock, contact elevator, clock's a long time, radio clock, broken doorknob. Wall clock? Somehow? We headed for Grape Tower. Mm-hmm. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. Yep. But the alarm inside Nekomaru's chest was set for 7.30 a.m. Nekomaru died because of that alarm, right? His time of death and the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. Oh, wait, no, they couldn't have. No, shit, they couldn't have. Because of the... Because the friggin' radio clock. So, no! It, yeah! It's gotta be it! Fuck! I know what it is. Alright. No more pooping around. We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. But the alarm inside Nekomaru's chest was set for 7 3 a.m. Nekomaru died because of that alarm, right? His time of death and the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. No, that's wrong. No, the clock inside his chest was a radio clock, so it would have been impossible to mess with. You know, now that I think about it, we barely use that thing where we take someone's statement and fire it at someone else's, right? Do we have a thing for that? Do, what is it called? Um, do we have a thing? No, there's no thing. It's not saying a thing. Um, 
But I guess it would be, like, I don't know, the thing where we take someone's statement and put it to someone else's, and we object with their other statement. Anyways, that thing has really not really been used much. Yeah. Um, anyways. Yeah, it couldn't have been messed with, but the wall clock could have been. So you're saying there's no way the killer could have tampered with the clock? Not that clock. Maybe the clock Miss Sonia saw was the one that got tampered with. Which one did Miss Sonia see? The clock inside Grape House? Yes, that one. And Strawberry House, too. No, I checked all the clocks inside the Fun House. Oh, that's what I asked you to do. So you really listened to me and checked all the clocks. And because of that, I can confidently declare that all the clocks had the same time displayed. And they all had the wrong time displayed. If there's no possibility that the time was tampered with, then we must doubt that human's testimony. Oh, which humans? Please believe me, we are not lying. Oh, you're gonna doubt Sonya? Then maybe it's a misunderstanding? <laughs> uh, I never misunderstand. I'll crush you into dog food. All of the uh, clocks were tampered with. It's pretty simple. There's time related contradiction. I don't think I should doubt the testimonies. I should doubt the clock. There's no mistake that something was done, but... What was it? Perhaps we overlooked something. Maybe we're misunderstanding something. Think. I'll focus and think. I should be able to find the answer to that mystery. Another logic dive? Oh, Okay, fine. Alright, I know what to do this time. Hopefully. All right, got any jumps? Oh, oh, ah! Oh, what? Fuck! Shit! You got me, game. You got me. I was too slow. You are too slow. Oh, fuck! What? I was totally on there. God damn these stupid dive sections. Uh, they're great, by the way. They're really clever how they use them. I thought they'd be stupid, but what they did last time was actually pretty smart. Anyways, but fuck them. They keep screwing. Me. <laughs> Remember, I need the right amount of bitching. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Come on, where's the first question? Let's do questions. Got a question? Let's do questions. What did Hajime and the others misunderstand? Uh, who the... What? We don't know who the killer is. No! I was too slow! Okay. Actually, I was going too fast. The time in the building. That's what they misunderstood. hey -ya! Take that, fool. Foolish fool who foolishly thinks they're not a foolish fool, but they're clearly a foolish fool for thinking that they're not a foolish fool, because... Fool. Holy shit! Whoa! That's new. Okay. You wanna... T ah! Ah! I put my hand down for one second. Uh... Okay, fine. Good thing I got that good turning capability. Damn, a logic dive is making things tricky. I just want to do my science. Ugh. 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 Ah! Ugh. Ugh. Jesus. Which clock was tampered with? Uh, uh, the building's clocks. No, fuck, dick balls. <laughs> I gotta slow down during those sections. It's always blue all the time, baby. Not always, but a lot of the time. Woohoo! 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 Oh shit! Oh fuck! Alright, next. Yeah. Nana, anime, nana. Woo! Uh, which house had the wrong time? Both houses. Both fuck. Both houses. I get the answer in time. I'm just too goddamn slow. It's all blue all the time. I win. I'm the wiener. Why is it always blue? Who cares? Just a fan of blue, I guess. 
it's all coming together. Still don't know who the killer is. You said you checked all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Let me think for a second and see if I can really figure this out now that we've come this far. Um, so if the impact, when they checked the wall clock, was the the thing going kerplooey, um, then let me think. The impact went kerplooey, right? So, during that time, Fihiko was in the lounge, so he likely was not the killer, although it depends. How long was he left stranded there? I'm not really sure. Although, wait, no, 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 no. I have an idea, at least. Because what was it? Um, is it Fihiko's account? Yeah. Toward the first floor of Strawberry House at 5 a.m. But it wasn't 5 a.m. It was 7 a.m. And he was doing that because he's the only one who knew the right time because of his internal clock. Gotcha. That part I get now. Um, the question is... Why was the time tampered with? So... When it happened, half an hour later, when the fall happened, Fihiko was apparently in the lounge, and then the two other people rushed over. Anytime between 7 and 7.30, um, he, the elevator thing could have happened, so it would be ample time to get back to them. Although, if the last place it had to be would have had to be in Grape House, actually, right? Unless you did the final dead room, then maybe not. Hmm. Because I was thinking... If the last place it was was Grape House, then the killer is maybe a girl, but because of the final dead room thing, if they've cleared that, then they should be able to, to traverse them. So, I'm not... I don't know! Who's the killer?! I don't know! Can I just say it's Akane, please? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. Actually, all of them did. But what if all those clocks had been messed with? What? All the clocks? Exactly. So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. But they couldn't tamper with the radio clock. <sighs> so that's what it was. There's no way I would have noticed that. Nah, you should have been able to with the radio clock, knowing that much. This is truly fantastic! I'm glad you're being happy again, Nagito. This is when I like you the most. Now's not the time to be pleased. More importantly, how much was the time off? Two hours. She's right, that's the main problem. You need to clarify how much the time was off after the, the killer messed with the clocks. Two hours. It's definitely the next mystery. I'm gonna reach the truth in one go. Two hours. Um... Do I even need a... Clocks alarm timer? Clocks alarm timer. Oh, I, I can switch in the middle of that? Cool. If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. The time of death was clearly 7.30 a.m. Yep. The problem is, what time would 7.30 be in our time? Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the sound when he fell. You did. You did hear that. Um. Which one is it? Strange feeling. Nagito's sudden coherence. Contact elevator. Whose account is it? It would have been a great clue. Akane's account? It was Akane's. Or no? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Too slow. He's not the type to let out a scream. If only Nekomaru's alarm was loud enough, we would have heard it too. There's no point in saying that. If does not exist in this world. I know what to do. I know what to do. I got it, Mommy. If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. Ah! <laughs> the time of death was clearly 7.30 a.m. The problem is, what time would 7.30 be in our time? 
Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the, the sound when he fell. I agree with that. Yay. That's right. We should have heard the sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? It was off by two hours then. Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Was that the sound from when Nekomaru fell? It would make the most sense, yes. It would, the impact with the pillar, probably. Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first, and the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise, too. Yup. Would make sense. It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. Yes, exactly. Though that doesn't mean that's, uh, that the killer has an alibi or anything, because there was like a half an hour difference. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well, that sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. You didn't hear it at all? Neither did Nagito. Why would that be? Maybe you're just a heavy sleeper? It couldn't be that, though. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. That's one possible reason. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pings. Let's think about this for a second. Who had the good rooms? Sonya had a good room. And Chalky has a good room. Soundproof! Soundproof, right? Soundproof? Isn't soundproof a thing? Yeah! Rooms are supposed to be... At least the best rooms should be soundproof, right? Because apparently everybody heard it, except Sonya and Nagita. Who else shouldn't have heard it? Chiaki and Gundam. Um, does that mean Gundam's the killer? Because maybe my prediction was right, even though for the wrong reasons. Because I'd like to think uh, Chiaki isn't the killer. I mean, I don't... What was Chiaki doing at the time for her to have heard it, if she did hear it? There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise, anyway. What was Chiaki doing at the time? If she's not the killer, what was she doing? If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. Yeah, I think they even said that. Like, I don't remember it completely, but they said at some point, some of the rooms are soundproof. I heard that sound probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. All right. Excellent work, Akane. What about you, Chiaki? Did you hear it? Were you in your room? If that rumbling sound we heard was at 5.30 a.m., it's likely the answer to much of our time was two hours. I see. Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30. And if we heard the sound of his impact at 5.30, that means our time was off by two hours. Exactly. Two hours? That much? Apparently. We were starving pretty badly. There's no way we would have noticed. Yeah, I'm just... Mm, I'm really... I'm really thinking about this now. What was Chiaki doing? To have heard the sound, that is. Eh. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? To give himself an alibi? The reason is obvious. So they can lure out just Nekomaru. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, true. I get it. Yep, I get it. If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? Because he has the tower that never tells the wrong time. From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. Besides messing with the time, the killer was just a specific thing. If they're trying to lure, then it would be... Um... The... Monokuma Tai Chi? I see! That's it. The killer made use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. 
how did they use it? Because of the radio timer. He's never wrong. His clock isn't wrong, unlike the stupid clock the funhouse can be messed with. <laughs> he's, o he's OP. We were required to go to Great Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? Yeah, it was a huge pain. But if they mess with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time, but that wouldn't affect Nekomaru. His radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. Then, when I witnessed Nekomaru early in the morning... He was going to do Tai Chi. If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah, that's pretty much it. At that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. Yeah, he's being a little late, really, because they're supposed to be there for 7 a.m., aren't they? I see. Now that I think about it, I realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> too early. He didn't even ask you yet. <laughs> How outrageous! I didn't expect everyone to ditch Monokuma Tai Chi. Turns out like this after all, so I guess it can't be helped. When you said everyone, you were including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth, it was way past the meeting time. Ah, jeez! That's, well, how should I put it? <laughs> um, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot, or something like that. What? Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fault? Uh, sure. Wrong! Too bad! What? Liar! I'm right! <laughs> nice. That's not it! It's incorrect! Th that's definitely the correct answer. You always get so stubborn like this. Oh, them and their lovers' quarrels. Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. Now that we've found out how the killer lured Nekomaru, the number of suspects has drastically decreased. Oh. To two? Possibly? Maybe? Possibly. Hey, why would that decrease the number of suspects? Don't be a friggin' liar! You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Buyuhiko's going to say next. Oh. Huh? What the hell do you mean? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. Did something else happen after that? Actually, who messed with the clock? Why would Gundam mess with the clock? If Gundam's the killer, then he'd be setting himself up for failure because he should have been in the soundproof room. Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru, the clock in the Strawberry House Lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Not quite, because there was a half an hour difference. But, um... Eh? I mean, I feel like that... Okay, here's the thing. That clock kind of gives the people who are their alibis, right? So would that be why the clock was used in the first place? If that's the case, then whoever does have an alibi is a suspect. More sus suspect. Which would be Soda Cans, Fuyuhiko, and Gundam. So, I mean... Eh. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? And Gundam should have been in a soundproof room, so... I'm thinking it's Gundam at this point. I... remember now. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. There was one guy who never left the lounge. That's not what's suspicious, but we'll get to that in a second. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that Bastard never came out of his guest room. Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? 
Uh, not quite. We'll get to that. Is that in our evidence? Do we even have that? Not as far as I can tell, but I do remember it being a thing. There are soundproof rooms. I remember that. Who is it? Who's the bastard? If whoever doesn't have an alibi for that time, right? This isn't the killer, but okay. You're the only one. The one who wasn't there. It's you, right, Nagito? That's right. Nagito wasn't there. But that doesn't make him the killer. Because of soundproof rooms. It was just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhiko. You didn't come out, even though the alarm was going off like crazy. You weren't in your room, were you? Oh no, he was. You guys just don't remember, do you? If that's the case, where were you? Please. Say something! Is he gonna say you're all idiots? If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! What? If I may be frank, even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. Oh? Why is that? You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> it's merely the foolish talk of the weak. Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. Because of the room. He couldn't? You, you're definitely fucking lying. H however, that is also true for me. Exactly. What was Chiaki doing then? That's a good question. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? I mean... Everyone else heard it. To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me, too. There we go. Gundam's the killer. Confirmed. Okay, moving on. Huh? I was in a pretty deep sleep, so I thought that's why I couldn't hear it. But it wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Because soundproof rooms. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? My thoughts on this are iffy. Uh, I'll have to wait to see where this goes, but it kind of was just out of nowhere. Oh, three out of four, soundproof. One of them should have been in the room, but they weren't, so they're the killer. And that's kind of obvious. So, eh. I mean, other than that, it's kind of coming out of nowhere, as far as I can tell. So, not sure if I'm a fan of this, but maybe there's more to it. Maybe Gundam's not the killer. Or maybe even if there's, there's more to it. You still don't know. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common. And I'm sure you'll figure it out. So much for the Sonya Gundam OTP. Only people who didn't hear the rumbling noise were Nagito, Sonya, and Chiaki. Secret is what these three have in common. Secret that points to the killer. If it is... Uh, really? Is it this obvious? I don't know. Meh. Nah. It's kind of coming out of nowhere, obvious. I don't remember. I don't know what the first room is. The first letter should be D. Deluxe room. Deluxe. Deluxe hotel. Yeah, deluxe. It's definitely deluxe. They're just screaming that now. Uh, Dell? Deluxe? There's another E? Meh. Sweet? Is it sweet? No. Oh, room? No. What is it then? It's not room, is it? Oh. Room does not have five letters. I'm not that stupid. Where is this going? I'm not crazy. Room has four letters. Rooms? 
It's rooms. Okay. I got it. Nagito, Sonia, and Chiaki. The three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If this is all there is to it, then um, that's kind of weak. Because this is similar to the the um, the thing in case two that I had a problem with. It was like, oh, whoever's wet the killer? Well, there was only one person who was wet. Oh, whoever should have been in their deluxe room is the killer? Well, there's only one person who should have been in their deluxe room. So, I don't know. If I recall, the deluxe rooms are... I hope it's not this simple. If it is, okay. Not a huge fan of Gundam, but, meh. Light it up by a quality grade. Lux room is soundproof and has excellent air insulation. Standard room, social insulation is still pretty decent. Chromium room, several air flow and draft problems. The reason we could not hear the rumbling noise. That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. You actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? You bet I am! Using it to the max, jerk! <laughs> now then, you guys must understand by now, right? The true identity of Nekomaru's killer. That doesn't make sense. Who set the clock? Would Gundam be so stupid as to set the clock? No. I'm, okay, if it's revealed Gundam set the clock... He's an idiot, which makes this case kind of stupid. If somebody else hit the clock, fair enough. Who? All right. Oh, hold on a sec. Why does that lead to who the killer is? If it's this simple, I'm disappointed. Why? Well, that fact just now is a very important clue and a decisive factor in identifying the killer. D decisive factor? Somehow I feel like I understand what Nimiyu means. The killer among us. The killer almost murdered Nekomaru. Is this really it? I'm sorry, but this is disappointing. You're the only one! Gundam, there's something I want to ask you. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? His room is connected to Nekomaru's room, isn't it? Right? That was the room that was connected? Does that mean something? Possibly. What's wrong with that? Maybe that does... Maybe you could say, Oh, my room's connected to Nekomaru's room and that's why or something. If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. What if the universe can't hear it? Why were you able to hear it? Hear what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house on the same floor, and he couldn't even hear it. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Huh? Now that you mention it... G gundam Oh no! Not Gundam! Not the OTP! There is only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That doesn't make you the killer, so hopefully it's not that simple, but you definitely weren't in your room. That's why, even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge. Am I right? Gundam, um, you have some sort of explanation, right? You guys were gonna be an OTP! Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. Ah! Me? After you saw Nekomaru heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while. Am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, right? If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Nekomaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest. The killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Nekomaru in sleep mode. 
and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekamaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekamaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That's what it's looking like. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. Why is the alarm even part of their plan? Coming out of their room would have still been stupid. So, who set up the alarm? If it was Gundam, that doesn't make any sense. And, they were supposed to stay in their room. They weren't planning to come out and go to the lounge. Which means, they wouldn't have heard the alarm, or the rumbling sound, thus proving they were in the room. Well, yeah, but I don't get it. Still, why would they set up the alarm? I'm sorry, it doesn't make sense. Maybe Nagito did it and he's messing with everyone? Because other than that, this doesn't make sense. Just like us. He wouldn't need an alarm to prove that. Like, that's a very stupid way of giving yourself an alibi, and an unnecessary one. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone to check the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. I'm sorry, but if you actually did that, Gundam, you're a dumbass. That's dumb. That's a very... That's not even a very good alibi. It... No, that's silly. That's dumb. The case is kind of dumb for that, then. Okay. If it's really him who did that for that reason. Unfortunately... They failed to secure that alibi. Unless they gave a clear, like, way of making it look like, uh, he was killed at the time of his death and not hung in the air. Which they didn't, they just gave a hammer with no blood or anything on it. So, what were they thinking? That we wouldn't figure out that they were suspended from the air? I mean, I guess that's what they were thinking, but still, the hammer couldn't have been the weapon. I don't know. I was in the lounge. You did it, Fihiko! You saved the day and made this case too obvious. So the killer couldn't go back to their room, and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. They still shouldn't have bolted, but if they did, then they would have checked the room, so I don't know. What are you doing? No, but they didn't check the room, but they couldn't risk it? I don't know. This ruckus. It's loud and the supreme ruler of the netherworld bellowing for a sacrifice. We'll make all this noise so suddenly. But why'd you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. Yeah, that would make sense. Hmm, thinking about it though. I guess back then, there was a pretty good hint that Gundam was the killer then, if that's the case. Still though, just because he's out of his room doesn't mean he's the killer. If Gundam tried to hide... And if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. He could have made some excuse. He could have been using the bathroom. What's wrong with that? That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. No, what he did to himself was the worst possible outcome. He could have just said, sorry, I was taking a piss. Or as Nekomaru would say, OH SHIT! Those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned. That would have been ideal, but how ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. He could have just not showed up, came later, and been like, whoa, I was taking a piss. Like, is that so hard? I don't want to blame this on Gundam being stupid. I just want to blame this on the game creators for not thinking of that and giving that to him to say now. I was taking a piss, that's why I was out of my room. Say that. Answer me this. 
including myself in my four dark devas of destruction. How many ears do we possess? So you're not gonna say you were taking a piss? <sighs> this case was looking so promising too. Um, that'd be ten. The answer is ten. That's right. I possess ten ears. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. The soundproof system here may as well not exist. Oh! Is he not the killer? Maybe one of his hamsters heard it, and they weren't with him, and then they rushed into his room? Is that your argument? You bastard. Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic. The truth shall now commence. That's a new face. At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. You should have said that way sooner. But okay. That's right. That's all it was. The world is always so simple. You should have made that clear sooner, but okay. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? Isn't that timing a little too perfect? It's still possible. And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. Oh! We're not gonna do the usual back and forth shit we normally do? Like, we've never done this- Oh, we'll decide it with a vote thing before. It's always been, we have to be absolutely sure that it's them. So, why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. I hope Gundam isn't the killer. Maybe Nagu's trying to fuck with us again. Hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. What? Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? This is we're already on the fourth one. Perhaps I should say it's just a farce. Oh? Just a boring farce. So boring, so stressful. I'm so painfully bored that I might develop stomach ulcers. Seriously. Let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Last time you tried to finish a trial prematurely, um, you were trying to mess with our perception of the killer. Nagito, something definitely happened to you, didn't it? Mm -hmm. At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. What? What actually happened? Did you discover something? <laughs> well, let's just leave that fun for later. And finish this opening act already. Ah! You said opening act again! P please hold on! We have yet to hear Gundam's rebuttal! But he's completely shut up. Perhaps he can't argue anymore. <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words after being dumbfounded by your pathetic assumption. In fact, I shall deny the very basis. Your assumption has been wrong since the beginning. Okay. Since the beginning? Based on your assumption... Maybe Nekomar did commit suicide. That'd be a fun twist. At this point... I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I was present when the alarm at the lounge went off, correct? So far, yes. Although going to and fro is busy enough as it is, how would I be able to travel between both houses anyway? Uh, final dead room. I see. The contact elevator was broken. It could have been by him, after he broke it. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Grape House control panel, which shut down the elevator. Yeah, sorry, now you tell through a hole in your theory plan thing. Plus, the stopped elevator should have been facing the Grape House side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at Grape House. For these reasons, 
It's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Grape House. So? Then what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Grape House, he wouldn't be able to return to Strawberry House. Sure you would, if you had the final dead room path. However, I was already at Strawberry House. I was present when the alarm in the lounge started ringing. Which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Sorry, Nagito kind of blows a hole in that theory of yours. Are you serious? And here I thought it's already been decided. Here I thought it had already been decided. Here I thought it had, not it's. Isn't that wrong? I, would, I think so. Here I thought it has already been? No, here I thought it had already been. Yeah, that's that's wrong. <laughs> Have you learned your lesson, pitiful humans? You cannot overcome this contradiction. That's wrong. When something is obviously wrong, that's when a contradiction is born. There's no such thing as a contradiction that can't be overcome. Well, I guess we're going to have to overcome it then. Um, fun fact, I was forced to wait a day to, co to go to continue, so I have no idea what we're talking about right now. Was the only means of travel between the two houses. Okay. No, it as wasn't. As long as that elevator was broken, your assumption collapses. Plus, the elevator was broken at Grape House. If the killer cannot return to Strawberry House... Since I was at Strawberry House at that time, there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. There is. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already? But I don't have the thing. I know exactly what it is. Like, it's in the truth bullets. Like, I'm just getting back into this and I already know exactly what it is. Um... Where is it? Nagito's sudden appearance. He appeared at Grape House via some unknown method. This is exactly how he did it. Other than that, I'm not sure what they're going with this, but okay. Alright, let's pay attention. I might need to represent one thing to something else, because I haven't done that in a while. That elevator was... The only means of travel between the two houses. I don't agree, but okay. As long as that elevator was broken, your assumption collapses. Plus, the elevator was broken at Grape House. If the killer cannot return to Strawberry House. Since I was at Strawberry House at that time, there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. Oh, wait. Shit. Give me that. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already? I think that's it. It's the secret passageway. Just gotta be careful about aiming this. The elevator was... The only means of travel between the two houses. Bitch! No, that's wrong! No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. I really like that feature, by the way. I wish they used it more. Um... Yeah! Such a method does not exist! Ah, uh, such a method does! Nagito, you wanna speak? Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? Uh, alright. Well, it would be Gundam as well, right, if he's the killer, but it's Nagito. You're the only one! Nagito, you should know. Huh? What are you talking about? Why do you gotta act so pessimistic? I liked it when you were all hope owner Uh, I don't even want to make the motion now. It's not worth it. Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right? Nagato, why are you here? Nani? Because I showed up. 
There's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. It's the hatch at the end of the fun dead house thing. Isn't that right? Jeez. Once again, I let the reserve course show up. Oh, shut up. You're just a lucky student. Stop acting like, like, like you're bigger than me. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the octagon, which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. After I opened the door and went down. Surprise, surprise. I ended up in the Monokuma archive. Which is on the third floor of Grape House. Yeah, there's no reason to ever go in there. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Meaning the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Ding, ding, ding. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they use that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they wanted. Well, there you go. Infinity Unlimited Flame! Alright. You say cool things. However, what if the killer was unaware of the existence of the final dead room? But you've never done, uh... But you don't have nearly as cool a personality as Okabe. He's way cooler. He's not some fraud like you. He He's a genuine faker. Not a fake faker. You're only making us think you're a faker, but you're not really a faker, because you are an evil person, you evil, evil, evil. Of course you are aware of the existence. There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion you have fabricated from your own suspicion. It's true that you could probably figure out that the towers were vertically connected if you're smart enough and were able to test it, but... Unlikely. Also, the weapons that were used, like the wire and the hammer, where would they come from if not from the uh, octagon? <laughs> if you value your life, you should stop with your scrutiny. How about you make your arguments first? There's no way I can stop. What did you say? Someone's guilty, and if it looks like it's you, I have to pursue this until I see some reason to think it's not you. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. And you wouldn't like me when I'm proving that you're about to get executed. What of it? Um... I'm not sure where they're going with this, but possibly the wire. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? His argument is exhausting. Just listening to it makes me tired. I need to skillfully cut back Nesta's words so he doesn't outpace me. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Back. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Is that good enough? No. Shit. Okay. Oh, I can slow down time in these segments, can't I? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Did I do enough? Okay! Tap, 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 Oh, thank God. I would have hated to do that argument again. proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blind confusion, at least Whoops. pray to the key which dwells in the light! He probably means try proving the evidence that the killer went to the octagon, then the wire. Okay. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the octagon? Don't bark, you cur! 
If you don't want at least oh, the key which dwells in the light. Okay, okay, okay. It just no shows up out of nowhere. Your own reasoning. You say the killer went to the octagon. Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blind Allow me to cut through those words. The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body. Uh, honestly, if it wasn't for Hajime's hint, that might have been a little more trickier for me to do. That might have still been the first thing I tried, but I would not have been nearly as sure about it. The hammer that looked like the weapon, and the chain on the door in the tower. Where else would you get them but in the octagon? Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. Where did the killer obtain them? Did you hear him just now? Those were all the items that weren't in Funhouse. He skipped the the. I thought these were supposed to be fully voiced. It's a hack! The only place I can think of is the octagon. Exactly. There were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains too. Yeah, we don't need to believe you, but even if we don't, like where else would they get them? Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the octagon. Yeah, Gundam. Jeez, you're not Gundam Seed after all. You are Gundam Seed Destin. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If that's the case, they obviously know about the secret passage too, right? You're not Gundam 00. You're Gundam 00 Season 2. You're not Mobile Fighter G Gundam. You're... I haven't watched many Gundams. I can't think of another Gundam I don't like. Um, um, Gundam Seed Destiny again? As you're not Code Geass, you're Code Geass, aren't you? Okay. Why do all the sequels suck? I don't know. They just do. Meh. It seems this is the end. Normally, we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. So I'm going to end this right now. Oh, neat. Uh, hey, what are you- He's gonna give this summary or something, right? That'd be cool. First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. Oh, this is the cool. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower, which was supposed to be the meetup point. So he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he'd attempt that. At that time, we didn't know the two towers were the exact same place. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise! Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival! Well, hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Okay, well, okay, all that was said really quickly, and I had no way of pausing it, and I don't even know if I can check that in the dialogue. Can I? Oh, I can? Jeez. Okay, da -da -da, I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Gundam tried to... The elevator was probably broken by that point, thanks to that Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower. So he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, and he could. And then he met up with Nekum. He met up with Gundam? How did the sleep button get activated? By one of the hamsters? Or was it the hammer? Eh. Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. Interesting. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened and come up with a different plan. Sneaky jerk face. And, without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Oh no, please let me pause, please. Like, let me, let me fully take things in, please. Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. Fuck. There's no way he could fight head-on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the good night button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. <laughs> I said don't skip through it. Like, that's a mean thing to do, game. 
I know I can always look back on the dialogue, but it's still kind of shifty. Anyways. Hold on! You... What did you just say? That... I didn't battle? That you're a coward? Blasphemy! With my four Dark Days of Destruction! Exactly. With your four Dark Days of Destruction, that's how you hit the goodnight button. Hmm. What's wrong with that? Don't mess with me! He's about to say, I battled so hard to make sure this worked right or something, right? Don't mess with me! I cannot ignore those words! <laughs> I love the happy face. But no, seriously, Gundam? Fuck you. You're a killer. I don't know what your reason is. If it... I mean, okay. To be fair, this whole starvation thing is a bitch on everybody, but... Still, you're the one who caved. Why are you angry all of a sudden? Yeah. Why are you angry? Are you about to say that, like... You fought really hard or something? No, because you didn't. If you really fought Nekamaru, you would have gotten your ass kicked. You cowardly, cowardly coward. I've always known you were like like saying that as a big show-off way of showing off because you're a coward. But at least you were a nice coward. Now you're just a dick. You fools do not understand. You don't understand at all. Ha! You make me laugh. After all this time, you still don't understand anything at all! Really then, make us understand that. I don't understand anything. What does that mean? It appears I cannot finish just yet. Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. What is it you have to say, Gundam? I cannot finish! What is it you have to say, Gundam? What do you intend to do? It's obvious I'm going to destroy your illusory assumptions. And what are those? Are you saying you still have more? You still have room to argue? What is it you know? Your words. You said I pressed Nekomaru's goodnight button. Yes. However, that button was on the back of Nekomaru's neck. To press it, I'd have to get behind him. No, you wouldn't. We've already seen proof that your hamsters can press buttons. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought, truly frail, succumbing so easily to this simple argument, it was just a mere illusion. No, you you can pull this up more than anyone else. I even brought this up back when I was making my theory about how, like, he was hung from the thing, and then he had his hamster, like, cut the wire or something. Other when I think of... I mean, I don't know, it's possible. We didn't find wire fragments, but it's still possible. But, um, uh, now that we're here, I did mention at that time, I believe, that it was also possible for, uh, the... It would have probably been likely for the the hamsters to hit the button and that would make most sense but yeah so that would make sense <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer at least surpass your own human limitation so am i gonna have to do this or has nagito got this one that's wrong Brenda. you're the one who's wrong yeah <laughs> such a wonderful line however i cannot say that i'm satisfied Will you be satisfied when I show you proof? Listen well. I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. And as for the other, you must provide a reason that will persuade that human. In other words, proof. You have not fulfilled either of those yet. Either? Either? Honestly, that's like the greatest debate in human history. Is it either or either? I always like to think either a lot of the time. Although sometimes it depends on the situation. But, uh, meh. I guess you really don't want to admit it. He is a coward after all. Alright, just as you requested, I'll provide an argument that'll leave you no choice but to be persuaded. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Forgot about this. Oh, and I forgot I about the fucking you. reloading, too. For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! 
crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! Show me the cadaver! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesized! For the Tanaka Empire! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David pro Oh, shit! Nekobaru's back! Do you really think I can get behind him so easily? This is the end! That was the easiest one yet. The four Dark Devas. <laughs> Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. You know those hamsters you're always gloating about? The four Dark Devas of destruction? Well, guess what? They were the, the things that really led to Nekomaru's death. Though you're still the killer, for sure. You just had an accomplice. As long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you. Oh? Yes. Exactly. Your hamsters came in handy, didn't they? In a murder plot. Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters to press the button on the back of Nekomaru's neck? We've seen him use his hamster to press a button before, unless you don't recall. Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster. But it would have been possible for Gundams. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes. Right? Such a good breeder, you actually train your hamsters to press buttons. It's pretty amazing, actually. Emissary of evil, in accordance with our ancient contract, the time has come to lend me your aid! I'm assuming back then you, uh, weren't planning the murder if that's the case, because if you were, this would have been stupid of you. Pierce through, Supernova Silver Fox Sandy! I wonder what's going to happen to his hamsters now that he's going to die. Hopefully they don't die along with him. That'd be sad. Click. Press the button? Truly, this is the Skyline Lamentation art of the Demon Mouse! Ha <laughs> ha Soon the door of destiny shall open! Now that you mention it, after Ibuki was killed in the music venue... Oh, back to this. One of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Yes, I believe so. Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Mekamaru and press the button on the back of his neck. Yup, you're the only one who could have pulled this off. As I always say, you're the only one! How about it, Gundam? Nobody else could have put him to sleep out of nowhere like that, like one-to-one -one confrontation. Maybe if Akane was quick at sneaking up on him, but even that I'm not so sure about. So, yeah, you're the only one. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Are you gonna break down for me finally? <laughs> Not just myself, but you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Admit what? Admit it? Did you say you admit it? Oh god, Sonya's going crazy! Uh, this will bring some interesting character development for her, I guess. If he is the guilty one, unless they're still f pulling our leg. It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and advance. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. You cannot find peace without sacrifice anywhere! You know, you might sound cool now, but it doesn't ignore the fact that you killed Mechamaru. Jerk! If you're gonna kill anyone, you should have killed Akane! Now, trample this light! Trample it as though it were mere trash on the side of the road! You might act cool, but I know on the inside you're fucking scared as hell. Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands! Oh, and by the way, I like the climax manga. I wish you could do it. Fucking Nagato stealing my spotlight. It's cool and all, but really? Really? Aww. 
Couldn't we have at least done it as him or something? Eh. That's what they should have done. Wait, what? What? Nagito already did this! What? Ah, oh, who set the lounge clock alarm? Um... If, uh, if, 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 uh, Gundam did set it, he's kind of stupid. Who was in the lounge since early this morning? It was him, but. Um, what time did Fuyuhiko see Nekomaru? Alarm set for 5.30, it's 2.40. No, 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 no. Nekomaru's weakness is... The wire wrapped around Nekomaru's feet. What does it say? Hamster and murder! The killer destroyed what after leaving the tower? What was the fake weapon? Who gathered at the lounge? Why did Nekomaru fall? Okay. Alright, what's this? Who heard the rumbling noise? Alright, so I guess I must have fucked up somewhere. I think I know where to. As I was looking over the things again, I think I figured it out. Um, no. It's further back. It's like one of the first ones. Um, is it here? No. This one? No. It's like the first one. Who set the lounge clock's alarm? Alright, that took too long, but oh well. Um, so let's see here. That's already done. What about this is, who was in the lounge since early this morning? On the loop on the doorknob. I woke up at... Alright. What time did Fuhiko see Nekomaru? Wait, what does this say? It's 5 a.m. right now. No. Nekomaru's weakness is... The wire wrapped around Nekomaru's feet. The killer destroyed what after leaving the thing? Uh, no. Damn it! I've been just screwing shit up or what? Why did Nekomaru fall? This one. What? Fuck off! Nothing else does fit into that. That looks like a fit. Nah, I guess the timing is off. Who heard the rumbling noise? I did. Yeah, so I guess I messed up some things. Gosh dang it. The killer destroyed what after leaving the tower? It's none of that shit. Why wrapped around Nekomar's feet? It's none of that shit. Wait. Oh, okay. I don't know what the rest is, though. Nekomar's weakness. Um. Is it this one? That's kind of vague. Why was the one in the case three was so short? Um. Who was, to, who was in the lounge earlier this morning? It would be Fuihiko, but there's no Fuihiko. Nekomaru's weakness is... Even the hamster is blacked out, that's hilarious. Killer destroyed what after leaving the room? Um... <laughs> Kiss the pillar, damn it! Nice. Um, why did Nekomaru fall? Alright, last stock. Let's go backwards. Okay, nothing here. Um, killer destroyed what after leaving the tower? And then... What's left? What is our final evidence? Who's in the lounge? Before Hiko. 
Here's everything that happened in this case. Give Noctar to do this. Let's first go over the many tricks the killer prepared before they committed the crime. Noctar's like, normally, Hajime does a big summary, but this time I'll do it, and then I still do it anyway. What? First, they destroyed the contact elevator. We should have done this as Nagito. It would have been so cool. Ah, well. This separated Nagito and the others in Strawberry House from our group in Grape House. Next, they lured Nekomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the Fun House by two hours. Additionally, in order to secure an alibi, the killer went to the Strawberry House Lounge. This is stupid, by the way. He shouldn't have done this. If he didn't do this, how do we even figure out that he's the killer? Maybe it was because how did the button get pressed? If that was how we figured out he was the killer, not only is that a really small- That might be a really small thing, but that would be a lot harder to figure out. And if that's how we figured out that he was the killer, then that would be cooler. It, like, along with something else? I don't know. Because this, this is kind of too obvious, plus makes Gundam look really stupid. And set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final dead room. This, this means the killer discovered the secret of the funhouse faster than anybody else. Oh, look at me, I'm so cool, I did the final dead room first. That secret being, Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up and headed over to Grape Tower for a specific reason. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m., but by that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. Nekomaru went to Grape Tower to participate in that. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Grape Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But the killer was waiting for him there. That looks amazing. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. My four octaves of destruction finally! <laughs> this forced him to enter sleep mode, rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. The funhouse itself. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire, tied the tip of the wire into a loop, and hung it on the doorknob. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They could have definitely done a better job with that, too. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower. Also, he should have gotten some oil on the hammer. And to keep us from discovering the secret of the building structure that they used to kill Nekomaru. Granted, the fall uh, happened after he placed the hammer out after his tomb, but even if that's the case... Or if that's not the case, then he definitely should have gotten some oil on the hammer. If that is the case, he should have waited behind, or, I don't know. Then, they used the secret octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending. And Nekomaru's body was still inside, dangling upside down in mid-air from the wire. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful.
and placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon, then wrapped a chain around the back door. Yes, yeah, that right there is dumb. They definitely should have um, waited or at least came back and gotten some oil on that because that's dumb. They were dumb. Gundam, you're dumb. Although I shouldn't blame it on you, Gundam. I should blame it on bad writing of the case. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage. So they could craft their alibi when Negromaro died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Negromaro earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room, and with no options available, time ran out. The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30. Well, actually 7.30. They probably should have maybe tried sneaking back into their room. Mm, I, no, no, I think they should have just, like, came back. I, sh I think he should have came back as soon as he saw Fuyuhiko, long before the wall clock rang, and been like, Hey, I was taking a piss or a shit or something. Like, instead of waiting and then doing this, because that makes them look dumb. To avoid a worst-case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. Of course, setting the alarm in the first place in the first place is the big problem here, so that was what was really dumb, because it doesn't even give him a very good alibi. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up. He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob. But because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. And because someone had already messed with it earlier, namely Nekomaru. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. Kiss me, pillar. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail, thanks to the broken doorknob and Fuyuhiko. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to their guest room, because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. It wouldn't got away with it too if it weren't for that dang Fuyuhiko, or if, you know, he didn't set the clock in the first place, because it barely even helps you at all. That someone is Gundam Tanaka. I can't think of anyone else but you. What is with that face? What is with that face? <laughs> splendid. <laughs> that was splendid. For a mere human, you did quite well. Do you really intend to keep up this act, even as you're about to die? it already stop using weird words to avoid the truth I would think you'd be more angry than upset or I'll friggin kill you myself I cannot believe it I just cannot believe you you killed Nekomaru I cannot believe something like that sorry Sonya Someone did it, and this time it just happened to be Gundam. Blame the writers. They decided this time Gundam was the killer. Uh, I don't... I feel like... Like, if it wasn't for the clock, how would we have even figured out it was Gundam? I mean, there was the button, and that's about it. I feel like there should be more clues. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like there should have been... Eh, could have been handled better. You don't wish to forgive me, do you feel regret? Then finish it! Cast your impure votes for Gundam Tanaka! The fuck is your problem, man? Why'd you kill him? And why are you so casually okay about us killing you? My beloved, deadly foes, let the voting time begin!
Oh, geez, 25. I think that's a record low. Oh my gosh. Do I ever not get a B? I think that's the most coins I've ever gotten from one thing, though. Um, I gotta check this. What was this? What was this? I need to know what this was. I don't know what this was. Gosh damn it. Okay. Hmm. This result isn't all that exciting. I agree. Honestly, the case didn't turn to the, in the direction that... I mean, it didn't go in the direction I was expecting, of course, but didn't really go in any direction I was hoping for either, so... It's not just that the killer wasn't Akane. It was also... I don't know. It just... The same problem I had with Pico. <clears throat> you, it's very, it's almost impossible. Okay, you could have seen it coming considering we found, we, like, Gundam came out to hear the noise earlier. So you could have seen it coming. But it's really just the one thing. Nothing else points to it being him. And then out of nowhere, if you hadn't remembered the whole thing about the, um, rooms being soundproof, because it wasn't in the evidence, if you didn't remember it, and you come to this point, it'll all of a sudden be like, oh, so he's the killer, out of nowhere. Even when you weren't, even if your attention wasn't on him at all, suddenly, it, it's gotta be him. So, it's the same thing they did with Pekko, and I don't think it's very good. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Uh, currently I'd say this case is better than case two, but, uh... Chosen as the blackened. Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Kind of disappointed. Case one was really good, and every case since then has been meh at best. Please pull the lever. What? Crap! I bit my tongue at the most important part. Oh, well, that's gonna suck. I know how that feels. So many dead people. I wonder if there's gonna be any more murders after this. Or is this the end? I don't know. <laughs>